starters today, we're going to talk a little bit about HSP, Hinox Joint Light Purpura. And uh, our willing candidate here, he's very interested in the world around him, obviously. Uh, Josh, our PEDS resident, but, um, and his mom here, you're actually a, a nurse practitioner? Uh, or a nurse anesthetist, a nurse anesthetist. Yeah. <laughs> and so she's actually become an expert too, but. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, so Josh, tell me a little bit about uh, this whole issue of HSP. Yeah. What are some good teaching points? So first off, what, what causes HSP? So it's usually the, Im the immune system actually attacking, attacking the body. You have um, IgA complex deposition in the smallest of the blood vessels, which causes the red blood cells to leak out. And you have this, this nice rash here that is uh, palpable. Um, the, the key word is palpable purpura that you hear often. This usually occurs in kids uh, somewhere between the ages of 2 and 11, about uh, 20 every 100,000 kids every year, more in boys than girls, and it is not contagious. Okay. Um, this, is the tip. this is actually pretty typical for the rash, um, mostly on his legs and buttocks because it's actually um, uh, gravity and pressure driven. Right. There he is. Um, now he's got some around his, his belly and some around his face mm -hmm. and, and on his arms, but, uh, and that, mom, that's new, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, we're checking another urine today. That's why he has come in today to check a urine. All right. So it, other, other teaching points, things that go along with HSP are abdominal pain. Um, sometimes you can have inflammation. The same inflammation that's causing the rash on the outside can be causing it in the GI tract. Um, one of the complications can be bloody poops, which may go with uh, intussusception, which is why okay. bloody poops are important to know about. Okay. Um, <coughs> joint pain. Our little guy here, he's had some pretty significant arthralgias in okay. his knees, and mom and dad have been giving him Tylenol and Motrin for that. Okay. How long does this last? It lasts um, four to six weeks is usually the timeline. It usually goes away on its own in about a month, but it can last up to 12 weeks. Okay. So there's some degree of patience here that's required, right? Yeah. Okay. Most, mostly waiting, and the things that we follow are urine, the look okay. for protein and blood in the urine. Okay. So what advice would you have for parents? Uh, just try to stay patient with us. In our case, um, his rash is getting worse before it's going to get better. Keep an eye on their urine and their, um, their bowel movements. Make sure you don't see any blood. And something that's helped us out probably more than anything as far as comfort measures go is try to make sure they have some Motrin before they go to bed. That way they don't wake up in the middle of the night with really achy joints. And so you would probably give it with a little food at, right. at that time so that you, know, you don't have a, the Motrin sitting on an empty stomach, of course. Right. But yeah, no, that's a great idea. That's, that's a great suggestion. So um, yeah, so when it started out, it was like, you know, being, being you know, in the health professions, you saw petite guy, and it's like, oh my goodness, do I have some sort of a ITP, you know, some some, some thrombocytopenia type yes. problems or uh, some bleeding disorder or infection, and mm -hmm. it turned out to be something that is nowhere uh, as worrisome, but, but at the same right. time, it's it's kind of an obnoxious disease. No, I was relieved, because I had never heard of this before, but I was relieved that it was something that's, you know, more annoying than serious. So, right, yeah. right, right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, All right appreciate it. All right.